In today's video, I point to the picture, I bend Tantra X with a hairdryer, I make a hole, a tank performs direct hit, there is a glass with a water, I apply French flag in the wrong color order, and lastly, I compare new and old parts. This video is sponsored by upcoming strategy game Man of War 2. There will be 13 versions of Sherman tanks, including crazy Calliope Sherman with rockets. It could be a cool model indeed. In Man of War 2 will be Shermans and more than 300 detailed models of US, Soviet and German armies from World War 2. So everyone will choose and find favorite ones. And if not, the game will offer full mod support so everyone can create and add, for example, Shermans from the French division Leclerc which played a part in liberation of Paris. Man of War 2 will be available this year. Click the link in the description to find out more. Hello fellow modelers, or rather bonjour. I chose a lovely kit made by Heller. There are many parts with sharp details and spare parts for different Sherman versions, so you can buy 3 or 4 kits and make each one differently. I also want to upgrade a few parts, so handy could be publication with a historical and detailed pictures. The Heller kit is cleverly designed and it's difficult to make some mistakes. The kit has soft details, therefore I recommend thin glue for plastic. The parts are lovely, but we can improve them slightly. Good is to clean residual mold lines and make parts thinner. I like proper photo documentation, because now you can see that the top wheel is not monolithic and has a hole around it. I am using micro drill bits and microelectric drill. The result could be better, but it will be partly hidden. The chassis has details for more versions, so do not forget to remove unnecessary ones. Good is for this purpose sharp hobby blade. There are parts from black and grey plastic, which is not perfect, and you will need a primer to unify the surface to one shade before painting. Now more details, I am cutting out monolithic plastic handles, I will replace them with metal ones later, good is to make at least guide holes. I recommend modifying the front headlights and replacing the cover glass with clear resin or plastic, it will be a lovely detail. Make this modification when the parts are still in the sprue, the handling is more comfortable. There are missing weld lines on the side of the chassis. I made a thin plastic string from a residual plastic sprue. How? Try to heat the sprue with lighter and tension it to thin string. The Sherman turret and gearbox were not welded but cast, therefore it should have a typical orange peel rough texture. You can achieve this effect in many ways, but the easiest is to apply a layer of surfacer or tamia party and making a texture with a sponge. There are fine small details, so you do not need any extra parts. 
but that doesn't mean that you cannot use some. I printed new detail fuel cans because the handles are in the kit simplified. The rubber Tantrex have pinholes and I decided not to use rubber parts for any future model because they decomposed after some time. So instead I designed new Tantrex in Blender and print them on my Prusa SL1 printer. I found out that the drive wheel needs to be more satisfactory, so I upgrade this part also. And primarily I designed super thin lights and periscope protectors. The thickness is only 0.2 mm. Funny if you compare it with the kit parts. These details will optically change the whole model and will look more like a larger scale model. The resin or 3D parts are available for my patrons with many other benefits. Or you can download 3D files on Cult 3D. The link is in the video description. I am making from copper wires easy details like handles and springs. I printed the tongue tracks in one line, but how to shape the solid resin? Easy. I use a hair dryer. The heats make it more flexible for a short time. You can make with a hairdryer sagging effect, when the resin cold down is again nicely solid and stable. I made new details, textures and plastic have more colors, therefore it's good to unify the surface with a primer. I use many shades, even the real tank has only one. The reason for that is to make the model shapes more highlighted. The first layer is dark green, this paint is suitable for deep shading. The next layer is olive green. You can notice that I am using for sharp highlights paper mask and olive light shade. The paper mask will make the color transition sharp and pronounce the edges more significantly. And I am spraying soft highlights transition on the round edges. I like French Shermans primarily because are nicely colorful with many decals. The heller has nice and soft decals, some have shifted to white layer, but nothing horrible. With the French flag is something wrong. Ah, the blue should be on the left side. I like water-based acrylic paints for paintbrush, because they are odorless and relatively resilient. If you dilute them properly, you can create a nice smooth layer or shading. I am painting raised details of a highly diluted light green shade. The decals shine more than the rest of the surface, therefore it's handy to unify all with a soft layer of a matte varnish. And with the steps, we are done. 
I mean, if you like a clean model, I prefer to make them dirty and after some battle action. Primarily the painting and rendering is my favorite part of each model. I start with random sketches. I use two shades, light green and rust, to make sketches optically deeper. It is 7 to scale, so handy is a good quality sharp paintbrush. I use a Da Vinci with a natural hair. They are more expensive than synthetic ones. On the other hand, they last longer if you wash them regularly in soapy water. I told you that you could use acrylic colors for smooth shading if you dilute them properly. Basically, it is only dirty water. I found shading with acrylic paints faster and more pleasant than oil paints, but it would help if you had some practice, and it is suitable primarily for small models or details. Or not? The dark wash is great for deep shading or details like real engine section or hatches. The advantage is that you can wipe out excess wash with a white spirit. I do not want to cover nice stunt tracks with a heavy mud, so I am applying only soft acclimated dust. I made my mix from Tamiya enamel paints and thinner. And again, it is good to use more shades. Unity is in this case a major enemy. I must use oil paints for something. I can use them at least for oil and fuel leaks. The advantage of oil paints is that you can blend them nicely or repair the final effect if you do not like it. And with the steps, we are done. It is probably my first Heller kit ever and it was a pleasant build. I know, I made a minor improvements, but they are unnecessary if you do not want to make this model for competition. Okay, that is all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. I cannot end this video otherwise than Vive la France!